get some unique insight into what's happening in the White House from a reporter who was in the briefing room asking questions today. Alex Thompson is a White House correspondent for Politico who writes the Transition Playbook, which focuses on the first 100 days. He's also a local boy who graduated from Agora High School. Alex Thompson, welcome to the show for the first time. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. And a special shout out to your parents watching uh, tonight as well. Okay, so let's talk uh, about the big speech coming tomorrow. It's sort of like a State of the Union. Uh, the president going to speak to a joint session of Congress. A lot less people in uh, the Capitol because of coronavirus. What do we expect for him to actually say? You're going to hear a lot about uh, coronavirus. You're going to hear a lot about the number of vaccines they've done. And then you're going to hear not as much about the first 100 days, but the next 100 days, the 100 days after that. You're going to hear President Biden talk about his proposal for infrastructure, which includes a lot of things beyond just roads and bridges, but includes a lot of things about green energy and includes things about climate change. You're then going to hear about this new proposal that he's also going to really unveil and put a lot of uh, meat on the bone, which is called the CARES Act or something along those lines, which is going to be a lot about health care. And it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of, honestly, like Democratic Party priorities for the past six years. And then you're also just going to see, you know, a room that usually has about 1600 people for these events. You're only going to see about 200 which is going to be a very different thing and people wearing masks. And we also are going to see for the first time two women behind the president of the United States, the vice president, Kamala Harris, the speaker of the house, Nancy Pelosi, of course, of both of them, California women as well. Um, so let's talk sort of big picture because you have focused so much on uh, on the first 100 days. And there was thought, Alex, coming into this, that Joe Biden would be a transitional president. He even talked about this a little bit during the campaign, sort of be a, a caretaker, an elder statesman. But turns out a lot of people say he's really more of a transformational president, more in the, the vein of FDR or LBJ. What, what say you and, and sort of what's the consensus of the folks that you're talking with? Well, I think he often talks about being a transitional president in the context of a campaign, right, when you had a lot of young candidates uh, who were saying, hey, Joe is old news. And he was like, I'll just be a transitional guy. But like, once he's in the Oval Office, once he's actually been inaugurated, he sees all those portraits around of FDR and all those uh, you know, transformational presidents that he grew up admiring. I mean, it's not a coincidence that FDR's portrait basically looks right in front of him. If he's sitting at the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office, the first thing he sees if he's looking straight ahead is the FDR portrait. And so, you know, he wants to be that guy. I mean, no one that's been dreaming of being president, and this is true, Joe Biden's been dreaming about being president since he was in elementary school. No one has uh, dreamed of being president and then just thinks of themselves as a, transformation, a transitional figure once they're there. They want to be transformational. And Joe Biden, now with a majority in the Senate, however slim, and a majority in the House, however slim, wants to be that sort of president. Do you feel like the Biden folks are also pushing the narrative that he's more transformational than his old boss, Barack Obama? Oh, absolutely. It's not a coincidence that you have the White House chief of staff tweeting out photos that are, you know, alluding to FDR comparisons. And you don't have, you know, Biden himself talked about how he felt that Obama didn't do enough to sell his original big stimulus package, which is the first big package. And he said, you know, I felt he should have done more to sell it. It's not a coincidence then that right after this first re remark, you're going to see not just Biden, but every senior member of the administration go out across the entire country to try to sell it. So it's, it, it, it is very much a, a, a little bit of attention that Biden wants to sort of prove the Obama folks wrong, that a lot of the Obama folks that sided with Hillary over him in the lead up to the 2016 election when Biden ultimately chose not to run. All right, I want to talk about you for a moment, because what I, I, I followed your reporting for a while, but I was really struck by a specific tweet that you put out. I want to put it up on the screen. This is when you announced that you were writing a book. It says some news. I'm writing a book with a hard cover and everything. And I'd like to dedicate this moment to Mrs. Gaviotti who told me writing just might not be my thing. 
and I should consider dropping out of her freshman honors English class. So I was amazed when I read that because I also had Mrs. Gaviotti for honors English at Agora High School, and she told me the same thing. <laughs> So, what do you make of this moment? And a shout out to Mrs. Gaviotti. We hope she's watching. <laughs> I, 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 I do really hope Mrs. Gaviotti is watching in this moment. And I, 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 if I were to give her the benefit of the doubt, I would say that this reverse psychology that she practiced on us clearly worked wonders because we've both been very successful in journalism. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I'm guessing that is not the case, in which case I really hope you're watching. And I really thank you for giving me a huge chip on my shoulder <laughs> to prove you wrong my entire life. Well, bravo. Congratulations on that. You're making Agora High School very proud. Alex Thompson, you are too. Uh, keep up the, uh, the great work. Thank you so much.